Welcome to the Higher Ed Retire Podcast with your host, Greg Shepard. Greg is a fee-only financial advisor who specializes in helping those in higher education to take control of their retirement. Since 2001, Greg has helped employees all over the country make the most of their retirement plans. Hi there, folks. Greg Shepard here. I am your humble host of Higher Ed Retire Podcast. I tell you what, folks, I'm I'm back. I've took a little... Uh, a long siesta, a very, a very long sabbatical here. I think, uh, actually, I went and looked at the last episode I did. It was seven months ago. So, reason for the break. Um, I don't really have a good one, to be honest. I got I got a little burnt out. You know, the, the death sentence for podcasts is letting them lapse, let, l- letting time lapse, which is what I did. But I tell you what, I, I started off here by saying I'm your humble host. I, re- I say that uh, in sincerity because I did receive emails from quite a few of you, and by the looks of things, you know, I can see analytics of the episodes that I've done in the past, and a lot of you have listened to quite a few of my episodes, unbeknownst to me, and your emails indicated or asked where I went and why I'm not producing any more episodes. So, you are thirsty for knowledge, and therefore I will provide uh, as much knowledge as as I can. Uh, For those of you that don't know me, uh, again, it's been seven months here. We're in November, and that's kind of important for the topic I'm going to discuss today, November of 2022. For those of you that don't know me, again, my name is Greg Shepard. I do have an investment management firm here. I am in the Kansas City area, but I do specialize, still still specializing in helping those in higher education get the most uh, out of their retirement plan and just basically navigate uh, their retirement plans. Now, before I get going, I do need to read this sentence for compliance purposes so bear with me here investment advisory services offered by me greg shepherd as an investment advisor rep of sna financial services which is a registered investment advisor so that's the company sna financial services again fee only independent advisor here in kansas city work with folks just like yourself in higher ed all over the country so if you have questions over this uh, episode that i'm doing here Please, uh, by all means, email me my name, or my name. You already know my name. My email is greg at shepherdfinancial.com, G-R-E-G at S-H-E-P-A-R-D, then financial.com. And also, before we get going, sorry about this, but um, I've been pushed. I've been pushed, okay? My arm twisted. Uh, Another forum or, I guess, another medium to provide information is on LinkedIn. I'm not, you know, I'm not familiar with all the LinkedIn nuances, but I did start a group. And there's right now I got it's been a, been going for just a little bit, and a number of you are 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 joining and wanting interest. So um, go to LinkedIn. You know I'll have I'll, I'll put the LinkedIn uh, link down on the show notes. Uh, please request to join, and of course if you're in higher ed, I will uh, oblige. And there's all kinds of information I'm sharing almost on a daily basis, just with nuggets of information around your retirement plan. Also, um, you know I have a YouTube channel that I'm trying to get up and going. So give me time on that. I shouldn't even mention that quite yet. So today's topic, we are going to talk about uh, two topics. We're doing two topics because neither one of them, neither one of them are very long. First one is TIA traditional. Okay. And the rates that they are providing. The next one is the Nebraska. So you folks in the good state of Nebraska, that uh, all the campuses up there that are associated with the Nebraska system, you have enhanced your retirement plan, thus introducing brokers links. So I'm going to expand on that a little bit. Uh, first, we're going to kick it off with the TI traditional. So uh, for those of you that are that are higher ed retire podcast groupies, you may have listened to one of the episodes where I talked about TI traditional. So TI traditional is that fixed account, guaranteed account, all right, where the floor, don't quote me on this, but I'm, I'm pretty accurate here, should be around 3%. I, I believe it's 3%. Now, there's different contracts. So before I get going, okay, make sure you know what, if you're going to implement some of the stuff, make sure you know what contracts you have now. There's a retirement annuity. Actually, let me rattle them off here. Oh, geez, I got my, it was in my email. So I'm going to talk as I load up my email here. I, I, I know this off the back of my hand, uh, like the back of my hand. Um, all right, dead air on a podcast, never a good thing. So we got retirement annuity. Here we go. All right, sorry about that. I don't want to do these episodes twice. I want to do it one one, one shot here, so I'm not redoing this. Okay, so uh, the TA traditional annuity, um, the fixed account is for retirement annuity contracts. 
Okay, so you have an RA, retirement annuity, GRA, group retirement annuity, RC, retirement choice. That's a relatively new contract. Then you have the SRA, the GSRA, and the retirement choice plus. So I just named off one, two, three, four, five, six. Six different accounts that you can place the TI traditional fixed account in. Okay. Now, like I said earlier, for those of you that have listened to my podcast in the, or episode in the past regarding TI Traditional, I am not a fan. Haven't been a fan. I am going to contradict myself, okay, in certain areas. And some of this stuff you just can't ignore, being the rate that it's providing. So in the past, these rates weren't very attractive. Okay, just go back in history the last 20 years or thereabouts. Look what, uh, you know, CDs and fixed accounts can get you, and it wasn't much. Now... With the evolution, that's not the right word. With the um, aggressive approach to the Fed funds rate, all right, 10-year Treasury yield has gone up. Okay, these are conversations we don't have time or desire to get into. Anything fixed has gone up. Money markets, CDs, um, just fixed stuff. That includes the TI traditional account. Okay, so what I'm going to do, well, before I get into the rates, I implore you, I encourage you, I welcome you to educate yourself on the types of accounts that you're putting this money towards. Because, for example, uh, the RA contracts, that's typically synonymous with the employer putting money in as well. Like uh, Arizona, Board of Regents, um, Nebraska with the 401A. Okay, so these most likely, okay, you're going to have the retirement, the RA contract. Getting money out of the TI traditional in these types of accounts are very restrictive. I am not a fan of that in most circumstances. Okay, most. Not, there's not one size fits all. So I've, I can't tell you how many times I've met with employees in the past, not clients of mine. Okay, they, they became clients. But they, you know, spent, whatever, 20 years working for ABC Higher Ed Institution and we're trying to do some retirement planning, and I say, uh-oh, here we go. You've got $680,000, which would represent 90% of your uh, 403B, 457, 401A, tied up in TI Traditional in the RA. Okay, we can only get that out over 10 years. Make sure you heard me. Okay, it's actually it's a 10-year TPA paid out over 9 years. Okay, so that does, again, not one size fits all. There are very many, very many, is that correct? Uh, there's a lot. A lot of different nuances with TI Traditional that you must know before you enter that account. I cannot stress this enough. If you don't know um, how to navigate those waters, by all means, contact me. Talk to TIAA as well, TIA, as they like to be known or called. They will inform you, let you know what you're getting into and the restrictions uh, thereabouts of getting out. Okay, I think that I think I've emphasized that enough. So let me get uh, my trusty computer here. Now uh, these are so with the Fed funds uh, rates going up. Like I said, everything fixed has gone up to the tune where inside of a retirement annuity an RA. All right, this is very common. Like I said, Arizona, Nebraska. Uh, there's many different universities. Those are the ones I, I help out quite a bit. Um, this is where the employer is going to put money in as well. All right, KU, Kansas Board of Regents, same thing. Uh, you're looking at 6.25%. Now, 6.25% from start date. Remember I said the date of this podcast episode is very important. This is for new monies credited. New monies going in. Your old monies ain't getting this rate, Okay. So you're looking at November 1st of 2022 till um, November 30th of 2022, getting six and a quarter percent. All right. Well, let me expand on that here in just a bit. Uh, money's going in October to October 31st. Okay. So last, obviously last month, still getting five and three quarters. The month prior, uh, August 1st to September, of course, this does you no good. Looking at five and a half percent. So new money going in, you're looking at six and a quarter. Now, if you were to... If you've had this TI traditional account for a long time, you're if you're putting new money into it, of course you're getting that six and a quarter percent inside the RA retirement and annuity contract. But there's ways. It, there's a misnomer. I don't know what word you want to use. There's ways you can drill down on that investment if you've owned it and see 
how much actually it averages it, the website averages it out but you can see what your credited percentage rate is per contribution periods okay that makes more sense once you actually drill in to the website uh, but nonetheless new money going in six and a quarter so that's why I'm contradic contradicting myself I tell you what the bond market Prices, 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 the bond market. We haven't seen this deterioration in my lifetime. All right. The average, well, I'm not going to get into percentages, but the bond market ain't worth the you know what right now. Okay. You're still getting interest from the bond market, but the prices are going down south quickly. And that's going to be, uh, it's going to take some time for that to turn around. It will turn around, but it's going to take some time. Right now, I think this is a good slash great. Again, check with your advisor. You know, do your own due diligence, not one size fits all. I think it's a very attractive place for cash, okay? If you're sitting in money market, you know, uh, geez, I should have looked at, also take a look. Um, I could do it right now, but I just quite frankly don't want to. Uh, they have a stable return as well. I'm curious. I might do that as I'm talking here. So um, I know I've got some clients with this. So I'm going to drill down into some clients' accounts and see what that stable return is doing because that's an option as well. But any money you have in um, cash, take a look at that. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to do two things at once here. Take a look at that um, uh, TI Traditional Fixed Account, okay? Make sure you know, again, what kind of account's going into. Now, uh, also, if you're going into an SRA, those rates are different, okay? So Supplemental Retirement Annuity, that's synonymous with you putting money in, the employee, the employee, okay? I'm pulling up my client's account, again, doing two things at once. There he is. Let me talk about, so the SRA, okay, again, you putting money in, you're going to get less because that's not restrictive. That's that's liquid, all right? I've never run across where it's not, but again, check with TF first before doing anything or your advisor. Looking at 5.5% <clears throat> right now. Uh, that's that's November. Uh, last month, October, it was 5. Again, this, do, this does you no good, but that money uh, that you, maybe you're putting money in, Okay, uh, prior, October was five. Uh, before that, it was four and three quarters. This is the highest rate we've seen probably in 20 years. All right, now I'm going to my client's account. Bear with me. Dead air, not the best. There it is right there, stable value. I don't know if I'll be able to find the, oh, something went wrong. Okay, so it's not letting me in. Okay, so what I want you to do is at some point, I'll, I'll keep trying to drill in on this, but I'm having technical problems right now. Uh, TIA does have a stable value in lieu of cash. That might be a good place, but take a look at these uh, TIA traditionals, okay? That's pretty much all I have on that. Now, I'll leave you with this. Each different contract, RA, uh, GRA, SRA, okay, they all have different crediting percentages. So make sure. I'll try to throw a link <clears throat> down on the show notes. I'm not sure. It, it might be like six different links, but I'll see what I can do. If not, contact me, and I'll let you know. Of course, call call Tia as well. I'm still trying to click on TI Stable Value, and it's not working. Okay, so that's pretty much it for TI Traditional. Um, I can't think of much else to talk about. Any questions, just contact me, greg at shepherdfinancial.com. You don't have to be a client of mine for me to help you out. Let's transition. For those folks up in Nebraska, um, Good news for you, right? Good news. Your plan, your retirement plan has enhanced, has evolved. You're finally catching up. Uh, I say that tongue-in-cheek. The uh, reason I say that is most universities I deal with, again, there's quite a few of them, they're, they are already there. Uh, Missouri's been there for, like, a long time, as has Arizona. So you now, the biggest, um, the biggest enhancement, I'll say, for your retirement plan is you now have access to Brokerage Link. This is not a podcast necessarily to explain all the different, all the nuances, not differences, but all the nuances, intricate details of Brokerage Link. Guess what? There's a different episode for that. I'll throw that in the show notes as well. Um, I don't have my, it's episode, let's see if I can find it real quick. Episode number something that was in the past, 30, episode number 30. So it wasn't that long ago. Take a listen to that. It's like 12 or 15 minutes that I'll go into more details. But basically what Brokerage Link does is it opens this window. Okay, now it's not a different account. So let me back up. Uh, Nebraska, this, is, this part of this podcast episode is primarily for you. 
You have a 401A, 403B, 457. You actually have Brokerage Link feature availability in each of those accounts. This is not a new account necessarily. It's still a 403B, 457, 401A. It's just a portal. I call it, I call it an investment portal. It opens this window, this investment window, for literally thousands of investment options. All right? So now that might sound overwhelming, daunting. I get it. Now, most people that dive into this venture brokerage link, one of two things, either you know what you're doing in terms of uh, choosing investments and managing it yourself, or you hire somebody, a fee-only investment advisor that specializes in higher ed retirement plans. Okay, there's not a lot of us, but they're out there. Uh, and of course, you can contact me. Now, the reason I say this, a lot of advisors don't even know what I'm talking about, don't have a clue what brokerage link is much less knowing the nuances and the details around it. Because even though I say there's thousands of investment options, some of them have ticket charges. Some of those mutual funds will have ticket charges. Guess what? We don't use those. Very simple. There are more than enough choices in Brokerage Link free for you to choose from. So the advantages of Brokerage Link are are many, but the ones that my clients, I guess, notice or take take notice of from costs, we can crush your costs. You can crush your costs. I'm talking expense ratios in brokerage link, index related investments, 0 0.02, 0 0.03, 0 0.04%. Okay, they're not giving them away, but that's about as close as you can get. All right, so costs you can lower. Uh, also sectors. So you can get into I shouldn't say literally any. I, I have never run across a sector that we haven't been able to buy in Brokerage Link, whether it's, you, you name it, pharmaceuticals, energy, green energy, even the most, um, you know, micro sector, I've been able to find something. Now, for those of you that have, well, in the 401A, again, this is specific for Nebraska. You know, I haven't, I got a client, because um, this was just introduced, so I will know for sure next week because I, I gave it a few days for maybe the kinks to get worked out. And all my clients in Nebraska, we're going to uh, uh, dive into Brokerage Link next week. So I, I, I hesitate to say this, but with a, every other 401A I've dealt with, inside Brokerage Link, we're able to get ETFs, exchange traded funds. I assume you have that ability, but don't take my word for it. Either contact me later or contact a vendor, uh, which should be Fidelity. You have a cho choice between Fidelity and TIA. I'm a big fan of Fidelity. So contact them to see if you have access to um, ETFs. Um, so lower your costs through Brokerage Link and access to sectors, of course. And through the 401A, you'll have access to ETFs. I love ETFs because, again, cheap. And I use them a lot for the equity side. Not so much fixed income, but the equity side. We're getting, I'm getting off, uh, on course, off course here a little bit. Going off on a tangent. But I just wanted to hit home with you all that you need to educate yourself. There's two, two main features of your retirement plan that are underutilized, overlooked. One, the Roth features feature of all the accounts, 401A, 457, 401A, uh, 401A, 403B, 457, Roth feature and broker's link. If you are not educated on both, you're doing your future self a disservice, okay? Now, again, take a, take a listen to some other uh, podcast episodes I have around brokerage link and Roth features, okay? Educate yourself, folks, there in Nebraska. Can't think of much else really to talk about. I got a lot to talk about, but I want to keep these relatively short to keep your attention uh, somewhat here. So contact me if you have any questions. Again, Greg at shepherdfinancial.com. Shepherd is S-H-E-P-A-R-D. I'd give you my phone number, but all these podcasts I've done, I've done all kinds of things, uh, videos, and no one's ever called me. You're not going to call me. So you're going to email me. That's how most communication is done this way uh, these these days. Keep your ears out. I'm going to be doing more as we go along here in the near future. I promise. All right? I'll keep this going for as long as you uh, listen, right? Greg Shepard here, Higher Ed Retire Podcast. Hey, folks, take control of your retirement today. Thanks for listening to the Higher Ed Retire Podcast. Just because this episode is over doesn't mean you can't continue your retirement journey. 
please visit www.hireedretire.com to see how you can work with Greg or to simply ask him a question. Thanks again. S&A Financial Services is a registered investment advisor. Information presented is for educational purposes only and does not intend to make an offer or solicitation for the sale or purchase of any specific securities, investments, or investment strategies. Investments involve risk and, unless otherwise stated, are not guaranteed. Be sure to first consult with a qualified financial advisor and or tax professional before implementing any strategy discussed herein. Past performance is not indicative of future performance.